I'm in a downtown warehouse in Los Angeles as EG is setting up uh, some cool shoots and content. Joined right now by Greg Kim, their director of LCS, uh, joining from Riot Games. Yep. It's what been, was, a, been about a month yeah. or so. Yeah. What was your role over there? Um, yeah, so at the LCS, I was the uh, insights lead, which meant I was working on business strategy and data analytics for the league, taking a look at stuff like weekly viewership, um, weighing in on various like strategic initiatives that the league was considering, uh, and also doing like audience research, like fan surveying. And you and I have known each other from even before then, because that wasn't your first foray into esports. Yeah, no. Uh, before even joining Riot, I was working on the Sloan Sports Conference, Sloan Sports Analytics Conference at MIT, and yeah, it was like three years ago. Yeah. Now at some point, where I think you were on a panel. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so then, and now you here you are with EG, it's, yeah, esports. Yeah. It's crazy. been a crazy couple of years for yeah. sure. Well, okay. So uh, you maybe you can give me a little bit of context on your journey from Riot to EG and mm -hmm. sort of how you ended up over here and maybe what your role is going to be. Because obviously, director sounds big, but I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously, working in like an insights role in the LCS, I got a lot of exposure to like the way the league operates in terms of you know thinking about how the league positions itself, like with the teams, with sponsors, just in terms of like the whole esports ecosystem. Uh, and I really enjoyed that job. Like I learned a lot about like certainly esports from the league side and like what it takes to run sort of a best in class league from the Riot perspective. Um, but yeah, as, as EG sort of was getting that Echo Fox slot, um, I was approached for the role and it, it sort of spun, spun up pretty quickly. And I think like I was a big NBA fan growing up in addition to being a huge video game person, so like the chance to be a part of a team and create something was super exciting. So how much are you using, because I guess on the insights side, I tend to think of that as more of like a, a numbers thing. You guys are really doing like deep dive analysis into how everything works from just even like a mechanics perspective, mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, was that, is that knowledge and sort of an expertise and, and stuff that you guys are using as you build out your roster and figure out who you want on the team? Um, there's an aspect to it, like I think, like the use of statistics and data in the League of Legends space is it's evolving and it's like in a very early state, but um, we weigh that in as a variable, uh, like, you know, you know, CS difference and gold difference and all that kind of thing. Like it's an interesting data point. It's not the whole picture, but certainly like we look at it and evaluate yeah. things. All right, so now what will your role encompass here at Evil Geniuses? Yeah, so EG is based up in Seattle, um, as I think uh, Nicole mentioned in another interview. So. Um, with the LCS being in LA, I think the organization was looking for someone to sort of be point on the ground and uh, handle things on more of a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll be sort of heading up the whole LA operation from the gaming side and like the team staff to also like some of our content folks and other people in LA. So uh, do you guys have a GM? Yeah, we do. Okay. So okay. essentially like GM and the coaching staff will report up to me as well as other functions in LA. So I ask all this because I want uh, fans to know who can they blame whenever things are not going well with um, the team. I think like I think ultimately responsibility is on me. Okay. I think like I need to enable our GM to do the best job he can. He's doing a fantastic job by the way, but um, it's the I guess the accountability stops with me. Yeah. yeah. So we're a day out from uh, free agency. Yep. So technically nothing assigned. Right. But uh, there's been a lot of rumors and rumblings about a deal with C9. I don't know if you want to speak to sort of what's going on right now as we film this. Yeah, I mean, right now we're confident the deal's going to go through. Obviously, like, everything's kind of verbal and everything needs to be executed tomorrow, 4 o'clock, but we're very confident it will go through at this point. And so what does the deal entail? Who are you guys Yeah, so at? we're picking up, uh, well, the deal entails Svenskeren and Zazel, obviously, and also Defley and Kumo in that package. Like, there are a lot of moving parts right now, and like I expect the next 24 hours are gonna be pretty crazy, but who we sort of end up with is a little bit up in the air. Um, but we're looking to make moves on year one, for sure. How confident are you that uh, Sven and Zazel are gonna be starting next year? Uh, I would say like 99.9% .9 confident. Okay. And yeah. that's, that's why I ask, right? Yeah. Is because it sounds yeah. like perhaps, like uh, the rumor I had heard was that those are the two that are fairly locked in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what, why did you approach these these players, or why did you approach C9 and to, to try to? Yeah, this um, I think like the most challenging part about our off season, it's it's literally a blank slate, right? With uh, with Dignitas and Clutch and Immortals and Optic, like those teams sort of took over existing teams with all those players and all those assets. But for us, like all the Echo Fox guys were free agents, so we're coming in with literally a blank slate, which is I think both like the most exciting thing about this opportunity, but also probably the most challenging thing. So like. 
thinking about the offseason, coming into the offseason, we didn't really know what to expect. Like, we saw the list of free agents and everything and, like, tried to come up with some scenarios, but then, like, things changed so quickly. So it's been, a, like, it's been about being agile and opportunistic in a way. And, like, with the C9, uh, with essentially the C9 deal that we're putting together, like, we saw a way to get, you know, put together a solid core for year one and, and some players that we think are great and have a lot of upside that enable us to do great things Hopefully not only year one, but also definitely like year two, year three, and beyond. Yeah. So in the past two weeks, I've heard a ton of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It was it was reported you were able it's to. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's and that's what I was going to get to. It was yeah. like, it's been reported that the by ESPN that the the deal was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Then behind the scenes, I heard the deal was on hold. Then I started to hear that the deal is back on, and obviously we're talking about it now. So what I, I don't know how comfortable you are speaking mm -hmm. to any of that, but mm -hmm. um, you know how how much w movement was there behind the scenes? Yeah, it's interesting because as a fan, you just sort of see the reports, right? And that's when like press is confident enough to like say something and like put it out on the press. Um, and I think from the team side, it's like it's a lot more fluid than that, and there are a lot of moving parts. So I think for us, like this was always like a, a great scenario for us to build and start on the league. So. Um, we always wanted this deal to happen. I think uh, there sometimes can be some moving parts with other teams, which I think led to a bit, of, a bit of the hesitation that was out in the ether. But certainly, like we view these guys, and I think most people would agree, like having having world semifinalists, like top class, like players in two roles and in residence at that. Um, was always going to be like an amazing starting point was, for us. Was that a, a moment of panic for you? Because, you, you know, like you, th you think you've come to terms and then maybe yeah. something falls out elsewhere or maybe yeah. things are up in the air? I think panic is a little strong. There was kind of like, an, uh, okay, like let's quickly drop some contingencies and see. But I think like throughout the process, like we were, we were in communication um, with, with C9 and, you know, they're up front with us and we were up front with them, I think, for the most part or pretty much for all part. Yeah. Um, so it was sort of like a wait and see, like let's hope the other pieces out in the ether like get resolved so we can keep going and then thankfully that resolved. Yeah. Now, I'm also curious, what has this experience been like for you? Because obviously, as you said, you're on the Riot side. Right. And Riot, I mean, has a role in the off season a bit, you know, approving contracts and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff, updating the database, but uh, wildly different from what I hear is just like the chaos uh, behind the scenes for for teams during this time. So I'm kind of curious about the perspective change you might have had over the past yeah, couple of weeks. I think like the most mechanical thing is like there are no weekends, right? Like anything could happen at any time. Like, uh, you know, my GM and I are like constantly on the phone, like with developments as, as things happen. Like it's sort of like, it's sort of 24 seven in the off season, right? I think starting this job right before LCS off season was like kind of crazy in a way. Um, it's been fun, like latently stressful, but fun. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's been good so far. It's been a learning experience for sure. Yeah. So teams, when they enter the league, sometimes they come in at super high price points in terms of spending. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think a lot of people heard that Hundred Thieves spent a considerable sum whenever they joined, mm -hmm. versus other teams that come in sometimes at a lower mm -hmm. uh, spend mm -hmm. and budget. Uh, where do you think EG is going to look? At, or how how do you think they're going to look next year from a? Uh, yeah, sort of this point? is like the tricky question because I think like. It kind of kind of goes back to that blank slate thing. I think like we sort of have a unique challenge that no one else in the league has thought about, and this is certainly something I think if the league ever expands, they really need to give a lot of thought to. Because you know when franchising happened, four new teams were coming into the league, right? And there were sort of a lot of uh, free agents out to play and and everything. But with us, like we're kind of coming in midway as the only team without anything to to broker. So like on one hand, like we want to be competitive year one, like we want to put together like some good building blocks for the fans and everything. But we also want to be conscious about like not blowing up the market, right? We never want to be the team that like comes and spends like some insane amount of money and all of a sudden everyone else has to spend a ton. Um, I think some of that's like kind of happening on its own a little bit this off season, but I think like we're trying to be very smart about how we spend our money, I would say. And I think like being responsible, but op also opportunistic. Um, so like, We'll spend, I think, what makes sense and what is intelligent is good for us and obviously good for the league. I, I posted before I came here uh, my final predictions, because mm -hmm. obviously now we're ta talking, you're confirming some stuff for me. Uh -huh. And there, there was one lineup uh, that, uh, you know, based off of some rumors I've heard of, of the conversations, and the, there was a comment on the, the post from a fan that's just like, that EG lineup looks sick. Uh, so how confident are you that fans are going to be able to be able to see that EG lineup looks sick? They might be top three yeah. next year. It's 
the next 24 hours are going to be big, right? I think like in the world that we're in, and hopefully I can look on this interview and be happy about it. Um, <laughs> like there's a world where we can swing upwards. It's like being a player at the top of the league and like maybe have an outside outside chance of making worlds next year. But you know, there are also other scenarios that the pieces don't fall into place. Like we're we're like a solid team year one, and we're really looking at year two and year three. Um, that's that's we're being flexible about it, and I think every piece like we're trying to be live up to our name of being evil geniuses and like make sure every piece that we put into place is like forward thinking and competitive. Yeah. So as the director of LCS, mm -hmm. and, and especially someone who's not, you know, you're you're very familiar with this, right? Like you've you've been involved with all these teams. Mm -hmm. how, you know, sort of how competitive it can be, not just on the rift, but also from a brand perspective. Mm -hmm. How are you looking at, or what are you looking to do to make sure that EG stands out as a, a team that people really care about? Because sometimes in the first year or two, like teams struggle to even build a brand yeah. or any kind of awareness for themselves. Yeah, it's like it's a really interesting like it's an interesting business case, right? Because EG like was around in League of Legends back in the day, but like you know we sort of took a hiatus and now we're back in a way, right? So I think like our brand has always been like if you look at Dota and the other, the other uh, esports we're in like. We're about winning and being competitive, and that alone kind of isn't necessarily enough. Like there are other teams that are sort of based on either like winning or history or memes or merch or whatever. I think uh, we need to find our niche a little bit, but like I think it'll sort of start with um, trying to build the right way in North America. Like I think with worlds happening the way it did this year, like at, at the back of my mind, it's like you know if we're like evil geniuses, like how do you be smart about like um, not only building a team for yourselves, but the ecosystem. Like, I think we're going to take Academy very seriously, for example. Like, I think we want to be, like, forward-thinking with all the pieces we put together. And even, like, when it comes to working with the league and stuff, I think, like, working together for the sake of the ecosystem sort of all wrapped into our brand being, like, smart about how we conduct our business competitive and, to some extent, like, leaning into that evil genius villain uh, perspective. Do you have plans for how you will, because obviously you can build like a great roster, you can have the academy players there, mm -hmm. and you can really build for the future, mm -hmm. but even it, there are teams that have done that before then sort of failed on the content front, right? Or the yeah. brand part, or like people don't really know who's running the team or who is, you know, what what is going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You guys have, have you solved that problem yet or do you have ideas around it yet? I think priority one has been roster so far. I think that's a, ta a problem we're definitely gonna tackle in the coming weeks, but I think like, you know, especially as having been a fan of the LCS myself and like looking at like what the fans like in broadcast or what they like out in the ether, I think like there's sort of an onus on us to be transparent with our audience. And, and it's, it's interesting, right? Our, our, our case is unique. We're building from scratch. So being able to share uh, with our fans like what that's like, being transparent about like why we're making the roster moves we're making and like sort of showing how, like how we're being proactive in this space, I think could be a cool touch point for fans. Um, I got to sit down with our brand and our content teams and everything to see how we accomplish that. But I think like, you know, I, there, I'm sure there's still a lot of fans out there that don't necessarily have a favorite team. And like, we have an opportunity to prove ourselves and show like, hey, like LCS has been around in franchise for a couple of years or in permanent partnerships for a couple of years. And this is an opportunity for a breath of fresh air and to, you know, latch on at ground zero, like of a team that's hoping to build something really exciting. All right, uh, I'm gonna throw this one at you. Okay. <clears throat> What now? Now you're on the team side, mm -hmm. and you're going to have expectations uh, from Riot mm -hmm. that a lot of the other teams have had previously. Mm -hmm. You know, or maybe they've struggled. We were talking beforehand. Like uh, in the past, I've heard, and maybe they've gotten a bit better. But like the owners' meetings sometimes are a bit contentious as people have different mm -hmm. opinions on where what things should, should go to. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see from Riot in the next year? Where do you think that they need to better support teams, or what? What do you think? you as a new team coming into the league need from Riot? I think my attitude about it is similar to what I mentioned. Like, it's possible to, to be a team and hold Riot accountable, but also like partner with the league to really accomplish things. Like, it's funny, like being on the team side of it, like being on the Riot side, like I'm thinking about viewership every day, right? There's no world where I think best of threes are better than best of ones, for example. But right. like, I remember after joining the team side, I was like, is there a case for best of threes? I, I, I don't think there is, but um, I think sort of thinking about what I like to see from Riot, I like, you know, obviously I used to work for Chris Greeley and I have a lot of faith in what the league is doing. So I'd like to see certainly Riot giving the LCS team the resources it takes to like, to really take the next step. Cause I think um, 
the league's big on taking like intelligent like big bets that can sort of play off our uh, like grow our audience and do exciting things. And you know, I I wouldn't have taken this job if I didn't think the LCS was in a solid state. I think like a lot on Reddit is sort of uh, there's a lot of conversation about viewership and stuff. And the LEC had a great year. Don't get me wrong, but like the LCS has always been strong in viewership, and we're still strong in viewership and and all like all other business metrics and everything. But um, I'm excited for the future of the league and partnering up whenever we can, and to some extent, like helping out uh, with my old job in my new job. Yeah. In a way. Are there any specific things that you would like to see move forward in, in the next year? Um, I think on the team side, it's always nice to see the BD team like bring in more sponsorship revenue. That's the easy cop out answer, I guess. Um, but I don't know. I think like there may be some evolutions to play format this year, and I think just sort of staying agile and responding to our audience and and you know making sure people recognize like the strength of the LCS. Like you know we're a broadcast that's blessed with like Dash and our analyst desk like every week, right? Like some some regions don't get that into worlds, and um, I think there's a lot to appreciate in what the LCS is doing and sort of you know partaking in the next step of growth wherever that goes. Like. I have confidence that they're going in the right direction. Based off of what I saw at Worlds this year, North America sucks. Uh, so is this going to change? Are you going to be able to, to fix it? What's going on there? Um, changing in one year is difficult, right? I mean, we'd, we'd, we'd love to like shake things up. But I think, like, I think going back to the blank slate thing, it's like, can we create like the infrastructure, the culture, like the coaching environment, the everything to like get us where we want to go. I think like there's sort of a wrap around NA players a little bit from what I've heard and like um, different teams have different sort of infrastructures and things in place behind the scenes. Like I think the benefit for us is like we can learn a lot from the last couple of years and obviously what happened this year. So to me, making the investments and like going to a facility model, making sure like we're taking academies seriously, making sure we take, you know, we bring on players who are good culture fits, right? What we love about like Sunscare and Zazel, all these other guys, like they want to win, like they're good players with upside and they want to win, right? Like we want players who are going to be good for the culture, who are going to like take practice seriously and like want to take that next step at Worlds. And I think not every team has a luxury of like at least scrutinizing the pieces they bring in. Like I think we prioritize culture almost as much as we prioritize talent. So that's a good starting spot, I hope. I'm glad you mentioned the infrastructure side. Uh, have you guys signed a coach yet? We're we're evaluating that. We're in talks. I think that that's part of it. Like bringing on the right guy that like fits fit the right person that fits our players and our ethos and where we want to go. Um, we've had a bunch of conversations over the last couple of weeks, but um, it's something we're hammering out really soon, and okay. we're, we're confident in our options on the table. Well, I'm glad you live in LA, because now we can just do interviews every yeah, single time. No, uh, you have something to it's announce. It's wild. Yeah. No, yeah, like being on the right side, like I just remember watching these interviews, so being on the other side of the camera is like a little crazy, yeah. but I'm excited for it. Well, I'm excited to see what uh, your, I mean, we were talking a little bit off camera before, but I'm excited to see what your perspective is like uh, it's always fun whenever somebody's at right and then they leave right yeah, and sure. uh, sort of figure out things from a different perspective. So excited to see how that goes. Yep. Um, anything that you want to say to any of the LCS fans out there who are thinking, should I be an Evil Geniuses fan? I, I've got a couple of my favorite players maybe, or yeah. I don't know, they're looking for somebody. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're starting from a good base, but I think EG as an organization, like we're trying to build for North America, we're trying to be smart, and you know, we're starting starting from scratch, so hopefully, um, you can join us at the beginning of our journey so that we can all reap the rewards by the end of the journey. Yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. for the interview. Looking uh, forward to you. seeing how the team uh, builds over the next for sure. uh, couple of weeks. And for everyone else, you can check out the rest of my off-season coverage right here on my YouTube channel. <sighs> he did it again. The man forgot to give me outros again. So now I'm stuck filming on my phone telling you guys about how amazing these Alienware products are and how they're great for editing and that soon for Black Friday, you're gonna start seeing deals and that if you go to alienware.com Travis, you'll be able to support him in our videos. So yeah. <laughs>